Hello folks, Fuzz here, welcome to our next episode of Final Fantasy 7 and we are storming through the Shinra building here. We're already up to floor 67 and we're going to be proceeding on to the next one where there's a boss fight in just a few moments time. So before we do that I just want to show you what it is I've done to prep for this upcoming battle. First of all you can see my character's levels there, pretty average, level 15 for Cloud and 14 for the others, though not all three of these party members will be taking place in the upcoming battle. Uh, that said, we will be, uh, you know, just making sure that we've got limit breaks built up, especially for Cloud, because it's quite powerful to have his limit for the next boss battle, especially if you've got Blade Beam, or even Klim Hazard by this particular point in time, though I think I've only got the first of his level 2s right now. Yes, uh, we'll get the next one fairly soon, though. And also, just in terms of materia and what have you, uh, make sure you've got the carbon bangles equipped on your party members. That's the item that I showed how you could steal from. I think it was the Moth Eater or the Moth Slash or something like that anyway. But check out my previous video on that. And also the Hard Edge for Cloud, a very nice weapon. And what I'm going to recommend is that on one of your party members, for example Tifa, you have the Elemental Poison Materia equipped in the armor slot. Because the next boss does, I believe, unleash some kind of poison attack. Uh, and on top of that, Cloud has the accessory that's called there, the Star Pendant. And that protects against poison completely. Well, without any further ado, then let's make our way over to the lift. And this will take us up to floor 68, where we can see that Hojo is waiting. Not particularly for us, he's kind of just uh, monitoring his experiment here. And his experiment involves Ares. Now, what exactly, we don't know yet. But it's going to be something sinister. It always is, isn't it? In these types of situations. Yes, I'm sure that's going to be a real incentive for Cloud and his party not to blow Hojo to smithereens. Just as I thought. Extremely sinister. Now, I dread to think what Hojo's plan is with Ares here but let's not wait to find out yes yes indeed hmm <laughs> this guy is sick or as Ares might say in a bad translation this guy are sick Well, that seems to do the trick. Okay, right, so we get a choice to make here. Now, you need to pay attention to this because depending on what you're going for, uh, you're going, you know, is, is going to determine what choice you make here. Basically then, from a gameplay point of view, you're better off sending Tifa away. And the reason for that is that's going to affect the boss battle a little bit later on. Uh, that's going to involve having the party member you don't send away. So we want Barrett in that boss battle. And the reason for that is because he's not determined... Uh, his damage isn't affected rather by him being in the back row, which that party member will be. Now, on the other hand, although it's going to hinder us on a boss, we're better off sending Barrett away 
if we're going for the best bromance trophy, which I know we can't get on Switch, but not everybody who's following along is playing on Switch. Uh, and the reason for that is we get two points to Barrett if we choose to send him away to look after Ares. So that's what I'm going to do, but if you're not too fussed about Barrett being the date choice later on, then by all means select Tifa here instead. And here we get to go ahead and name Red 30. So we can pretty much call him whatever we want. And seeing as how his name does get referenced quite regularly throughout the game, uh, it can be quite humorous to choose something other than the default Red 13 here. Something like Good Dog or something, or whatever uh, you want to go for. But I'm just going to select the standard default choice. And here we have our boss battle. And we're going to start here by just unleashing the Limit Breaks, of course. Ah, oh, missed it up there. That's fine. So we'll try and kill some of the uh, little guys as we catch them in AoE effects. But for main single target damage, we're going to go for the boss only. Now, the boss battle isn't particularly challenging uh, but obviously the ads can be a bit of a nuisance the one thing to note about them though is they can be resurrected by the boss if you kill them so that's why i'm suggesting that you focus most of your attacks on the actual uh, boss itself unless they can just easily get caught up as i say in the uh you know that the aoe effects of of the all spell or limit breaks or whatever the case may be So we've managed to get one down there. That's pretty much it anyway in terms of AoE. In fact, that's it in terms of the boss. So it only has a thousand health. As long as you start the battle with your limit breaks, as I suggested, then it's not particularly challenging at all, really. And that's pretty much all there is to that one. So the talisman is your main reward for defeating that guy. And you'll note as well that there's a materia... Uh, that's been left behind. That's also going to be a reward from the boss. But we can miss that. So make sure you don't forget to uh, grab it. Okay, so once again, we're breaking up into groups here. And we're going to go ahead and change the party. So make sure you press the right button there. And I'm going to recommend, once again, for the best bromance trophy, that you go with this team. And the reason for that is whoever you take out of Barrett, Tifa and Ares, uh, including a combination of these three characters, each of those characters will get plus two. So if you take Barrett, he'll get plus two. If you take... Tifa and Ares, then Barrett wouldn't get anything, but both Tifa and Ares would get plus two in points. So in order to make sure that Barrett's going to stay in the lead, we're going to select Barrett and Red 13, since Red 13 doesn't adjust the points for anybody in either way whatsoever. Okay, so with that done, uh, we'll go ahead. You can also access the menu as well, if you want to just sort out materials and that, that other party members have, but I really can't be bothered with that right now. Uh, it's a lot of work to keep swapping them in and out of party, taking away equipment and stuff, uh, and then putting them back, putting the party members you want back in, etc. Okay, so now we've got control of Cloud. Once again, do not forget to grab the enemy skill materia. It is a super powerful materia, and it's only one of four that you can get throughout the entire game. So you want to make sure that you get everyone as they become available. Uh, that said, right now it doesn't do anything. So equipping it is not really going to give you anything of use, unfortunately. I mean, we can do just for the fun of it. Uh, but basically, enemy skill will allow you to learn skills from enemies. And then use those skills in battles. But there's no enemy we're going to encounter for a while that has an enemy skill that we'll be able to pick up or learn from them. Right, so let's go ahead and just sort out Red 13's equipment briefly here. 
Uh, we could give him the Talisman, although that's really going to be better off going to a magic user rather than a, uh, a physical user such as Red 13. And everything else looks pretty good there. So we don't have Tifa with the elemental material right now, but that's fine. We don't really need it. Okay. Now we're going to head over here. And if we head up the ramp, there's a couple of potions we can grab. And then there's another key card we can get by speaking to this guy, I believe it is. Yeah, here gives us the key card to floor 68. And that's pretty much all there is to do on this floor. For now, anyway. Uh, we'll be back later, don't worry. Okay, so don't forget you can continue to steal from these guys if you want to do so. Uh, but I don't, quite frankly. So let's just take care of them as quickly as possible. Dum -de -dum. Bolt 2 is pretty nasty, isn't it? I'll tell you what, the enemies are starting to get a little bit stronger now, aren't they? We are taking quite a bit of damage. Having to actually pay attention to healing and stuff as well. Which we haven't had to do for a while. It's interesting. Some of the regular enemies in this game can hurt. But the vast majority of the bosses are actually quite simple. One of the things that you'll notice as you play through the game. We're going to head to the elevator by the way. Uh, is that outside of a few exceptions. Most of the bosses in Final Fantasy 7 are not all that challenging. I'm not sure why it's that way. It's a bit of a shame really. But yeah, uh, like I say, there are a few exceptions, and I will certainly be sharing tactics with you as we go through the game. Don't worry about that on all the boss fights, but don't expect a big challenge for many of them. And as you can see, Restore All combination is really coming into its own now as well. Looks like there's some pretty good experience that can be gained here on this particular floor. Right, so first of all then, we're going to go and save. And once we've done that, we're going to make our way back to the main uh, elevator. Or rather to the previous floor, not actually by the elevator. Uh, we need to get to the elevator, but we can only access it from the previous floor. So this is floor 66 of course. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and access the button here, but I don't think we get to choose the floor yet before we get rudely interrupted here by this bald-headed dude. This kind and polite bald-headed dude. Who is, of course, one of the Turks and goes by the name of Rude. So it looks like Reno is not present with them after our previous battle with him on the pillar. I'm sure you guys uh, remember that. Looks like we've been well and truly caught here, doesn't it, red-handed? So we might find ourselves in a spot of bother. And Tifa's been caught as well. Yep, everybody's been caught. Even Ares, she's just not here. Wow, we're getting exposition by President Shinra here regarding Ares. By the way, what is Red 13? Is he a, I've always assumed he was a dog. But I was reading somewhere on uh, the internet the other day 
and people were speaking of him as if he was a lion. But I've always thought he's more doggy than catty. But yeah, please do let me know in the comment section what you think about that. Is he a dog or is he a lion? So Shinra are searching for this place known as the Promised Land, which the Setra seem to have something to do with. And they want to go to the Promised Land because of Mako. It's always about Mako, isn't it? Mako means money for them. And apparently they believe that Ares is going to be able to lead the way for them. <laughs> there we go that just about brings us to the end of the bad guy shares all his evil plans with the protagonist's cliche I've just noticed that Shinra still got his uh, cigar stuck in his mouth, hasn't he? Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, looks like we're in prison then right now. Uh, and we can speak to Tifa if we want to. There's a couple of things that we can do here. Now, if we want to, uh, in order to get the best bromance trophy... Um, now, we're going to want to reduce Ares, so not Ares, Tifa's score here, although it's not really going to matter too much. Uh, but if you choose the Leave It To Me option, you get plus one point with Tifa. If you choose Kind Of Hard, you lose one point with her. So that's what we'll choose. And now we're going to select uh, another option here for more points. And if we choose to select, I wonder how Ares is doing then we'll give plus three points to Ares. If we choose to select how Barrett is doing, we'll give plus three to him. So let's go ahead and select that. Okay, and once we've gone ahead and spoken to Barrett, we'll approach... Uh, just finish the conversation first. Oh yeah, we have to wait for the camp to reset maybe. Oh no. Uh, we're going to select how Red 13 is doing next. Okay, this is just the best way to make sure that Barrett gets as many points as possible compared to the ladies here. Okay, and now we're going to select how Ares is doing.
Okay, it doesn't affect the uh, points to make that choice again. Uh, once we've gone ahead and spoke to all three party members in the other cells there, we'll be able to get some sleep and continue on with the story. As a matter of fact, you don't even need to, I don't think, speak to Barrett and Red 13. You can select Aerie straight away from the get-go. Uh, and that will continue the story without even speaking to the boys over there. Right, it's morning. Or, might not be morning, but we've had a couple of hours kit, no doubt. And um, what's this? The cell door is open. Okay, well this is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's going on here with the guard. Yes. He's uh, out for the count by the looks of it. So now we'll go and speak to Tifa. Okay, so what we're going to do now, because this is all very mysterious, is start our investigations. Let's speak to Tifa. Okay, we're going to speak to our friends, let them out of their cages. This is one of the reasons I love Final Fantasy VII. The build up that you have with the story. It's like a crescendo, isn't it? You know how you listen to an epic piece of music and it starts off quite... Uh, not quiet, but doesn't have a whole lot happening. And then as it goes through the song, it just builds up into just some epic, uh, you know, musical score or whatever the case may be. And that's pretty much the same with every art form, isn't it? And one of the good things that Final Fantasy VII does well is have that crescendo, that build-up in the story and characters. Right, so let's see if we can uh, get past here. Nope, not yet, so let's speak to Tifa. Okay, there we go. And there's a lot of dead bodies around here, it seems. Along with some new enemy encounters. Seal Evil is a pretty nice limit break. It actually freezes enemies in place. And for quite a decent amount of time too compared to other paralyzing effects that are in Final Fantasy VII. So as you can see, they're going to be pretty harmless now, hopefully for the rest of the battle, but we'll see how we get on here. By the way, the good thing about Seal Evil, uh, just as a heads up, it even works on a lot of bosses as well. Not only on normal enemies. And look at this, a trail of blood. Well, I'm assuming it's blood. And yet, the cage where Genova was being held uh, has been smashed open. Alright then, guys. Well, the save point is still in place, so let's take this opportunity to take a bit of a break. And thanks ever so much for all of you that have stopped by and joined me today. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We'll continue on our investigations of whatever the heck is going on here. Uh, something obviously to do with Genova. But I don't think this was in Shinra's plans, was it? But we'll, as I say, continue on with this next time. Find out exactly what's going on and get to the bottom of it all. Alright folks, have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. Take care.